Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Rockstar Flipper YouTube channel and look what just came in the mail. It is Friday, November the 3rd, 2017 and that only means one thing. iPhone X, iPhone 10, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. I'm going to review it a little bit. I'm going to load up my phone on it and then I'm going to play with it and do an overhead shot showing me clicking through all the screens and give you guys I'll review, show you everything I can show you about it. I'll compare it to my iPhone 7 Plus as well. So let's check it out. All right, here we go. I'm gonna dig into this box. I already cut it a little bit. Ugh. Apparently not enough. There we go. Ugh. Excuse the camera angles for a second. There we go. And there it is. There's the box iPhone X, 256 gig. There it is, little zoom action. Bam! All right, here we go, we're gonna rip this open. They made it easy now, you just kind of peel it and then you could just flip the box. Designed by Apple in California, built in China. There it is, it's not as big as I suspected, but I think we all heard that they made it a little easier for your hand to hold. Check that out. I do like that better than what I've got now. I'll lay my 7 Plus down. Check that out. Look, you get more screen coverage, but the size of the phone, this is my 7 Plus. This is the X. It is way smaller. I mean, it is a drastic difference in size. Look at this. I know that doesn't seem crazy, but when I hold this 7 Plus in my hand, look, it takes up I mean, I have to really reach around it. This thing, just reach a couple fingers around it. I mean, it is a drastic size difference, but the screen going all the way to the edge actually ends up being wider than the screen on this 7 Plus, even though this, the phone is smaller. So let us um, let me get this loaded up and I'll show you guys everything that comes on this X. Um, they do just give you the headphones, the charging cable, and of course the um, charging block and then if we look we've got the smooth round top we've got the same uh, vibrate button and volume buttons this side we've got our power button nice chrome edge we've got our sim card tray right there probably kind of hard to see and then the bottom we have our charging port which of course if you buy the wireless charging port pad you don't need no headphone jack as usual, but those headphones will plug into your charging port, so you can only do one or the other unless you're using Bluetooth. And then there's the Apple camera and the back of it and what it looks like. So pretty cool. I just powered it on. I'm going to get it loaded up, and then we'll come back on when I'm done. Okay, so the X is finally done backing up because I had like 70 gigs of stuff on it, so it took forever to transfer it all from this one to this one using iTunes. Um, anyways, the big difference you guys obviously know is the home button on the 7 Plus. There is no home button on the um, X here on the iPhone 10. There's no home button at all. So I'm going to show you guys how you get around that and what you do to go home. So let's say we're in, um, let's just say we're in my settings and I want to go back to the home button. How do I do it? Well, you just swipe up from the bottom. If you're trying to change apps, let's say that I've got my settings open and I want to go, look, did you see that? You just go about halfway and pause and then swipe left and right. And then swipe up, back to the home button or back to the home screen. So that is how you do it. That's pretty much all there is to it. That's the difference. Siri, you hold in the power button. Your and iPhone there's... is at 100%. You're looking mighty green. <laughs> there you go. Um, there is no battery percentage on this iPhone. You have to swipe from the corner, which brings you to there to see the percentage, and that's also the main control center. And then again, you just swipe up and it goes away. So those are the three huge differences. You've got no home button, no battery percentage, and Siri over there on the power button. Also, facial recognition, which I set up, but then when I did the restore, it says it's not set up again, so I'm going to have to set it up again and I'll post something about that, but it's basically you just hold it up and take a selfie and then turn your head left and right and up and down and it recognizes you and it says thanks and then when you swipe your phone up, um, 
you will point it and take a selfie again and it uh, opens your phone instead of hitting the number code, which I think is gonna take entirely too long to do because I'm just gonna go click, 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 click with my passcode and open my phone. I don't think I'll be using that. But um, being smaller, being able to hold it in my hand easier is something I'm really, really happy about. I like that a lot. You guys can see the size difference. Pretty big size difference as far as the size of it. But then you get the screen all the way to the edge without that border. The other problem is up here, you guys see the kind of cut out for the camera and where the, uh, the recognition and speaker or whatever are. That's why you don't have the battery percentage like you have over here on the 7 Plus. See that? And then you don't have it there because there's a cutout. There's no room for that. So that is why you have to swipe from the corner because that, that cutout on the top section there allows the screen to go all the way over, but it doesn't allow you to go all the way to the top. So if there's any other questions, put them in the comments section. I don't see anything glaringly different. 256 gigs is gonna be awesome. I made do with 128, I never went over. But again, Apple with the facial recognition, not a huge thing. I don't think that that's worth spending the upgraded money on. The lack of a home button, that's not really worth spending it. Siri's not really worth it. The reason that you would spend the money on this is either you need the bigger gigs, the 256, or you like that screen enough to spend the money, or you really love the new camera, which I haven't tried out yet, I will try it out. The new camera and video is supposed to be amazing, so that might be worth it. And the processor is supposed to be blazingly fast, so I'm gonna need a few days of running multitask and internet and all that stuff to see how fast it is, but those are the real reasons to upgrade. All these little quirky features or differences in the phone, probably not worth it, um, but still a cool phone, and the size difference is a big winner for me. The other reason I got this, a lot of people are gonna question, oh, spending $1,000, I spent $1,200 on this one, because it's the bigger one. Uh, the 256 is because my phone bill allows me to upgrade i get a huge trade-in value for the newest phone i got like 425 dollars for this one or 450 which came off the price of this one so this one went from 1250 with tax down to like 800 and then you divide that up over 24 months which only comes to like 40 dollars a month well i was only paying like 37 a month for this one so my bill only is going to go up like three or four bucks it showed it so for me to keep paying the bill and get a new phone for three or four dollars a month, obviously a no-brainer. I did have to pay the taxes for this phone, which was like 70 or 80 dollars. I had to pay that out of my pocket right away. So that was kind of crappy, but I think everyone has to do that. So any other questions, let me know. Put them in the comment section and I will see you guys a little bit later.